Hey, what's up guys? Uh, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to get the uh, BLE board here uh, back to its factory defaults or how to recover the board. So this is just in case you ever were to accidentally, you know, remove power in the middle of programming a new uh, a new application into the board or maybe uh, you had an application that was really big and it overwrote the bootloader that's on the part. Uh, this is how you recover the board. Now I just so happen right now to be running through some production so I've got all the anti-static precautions here everything's good to go and this is actually how I test every single board uh, before it's sent to the distributor. So I receive these boards without a bootloader so I have to load the bootloader on each board then I have a very simple test program that basically just writes uh, all of the pins out, it kind of sequences through all the LEDs and then it configures the pins as inputs. So if you were to drop this right into your project that was powered on, uh, all of the pins are configured as inputs. So there's no harm if one of those pins that this board is connected to is connected to ground and this board here drives that high and you create a short and all that kind of stuff. So that's kind of the setup there. So let me show you exactly how this works. So I'm just going to take a board right out this is a fresh board uh, I just got from the manufacturer. We're going to put it in the breadboard here. And of course, I'm working on a little ZIF socket system so that that makes this a whole lot easier. We're using the USB to serial converter. We're also powering the board from the converter. So I've got the jumper set to power on and 3.3 volts. Plug that right in here. Get the USB connector in there. And now we go over to the atmosphere programmer here and I'm not showing you all of the projects uh, on, in my uh, server list those are all confidential um, but we can go in here refresh this we grab the serial port there and uh, this is my blank BLE board sketch and we have two buttons here we have the program button or the recover button now let's just go ahead and try to program it uh, right now and this board may actually be um, Let's see what happens. So you can kind of see here, attempting to start the downloader. So it's failing and it's continuously retrying over here. Okay, so eventually it's going to completely fail and give up. So the reason for that in this case is because there is no bootloader there and it's looking for that bootloader to allow it to be programmed via the USB to serial converter. So let's let this fail. Okay, there we go. Failed to start downloader. Try resetting your hardware. Okay, so let's go ahead and recover the board. So what we do is there's two buttons on this board. One is labeled SDA and the other is labeled reset. And these are also outlined in the little cheat sheet here. You see the reset button and the recover button. The recover button has a label underneath it, SDA, okay, because it's connected to the SDA line of the I squared C interface. So what we do is we press the SDA button or the recover button first. We press in and hold. Now these buttons are kind of hard to press at the same time. So if you have, you know, big fingers and you can't really get in there, uh, just use the tip of a dull pencil to press the button in. And you press in and hold the SDA button and then press and release the reset button and then let go of the SDA button. And that's it you just put it into recovery mode. Now we can go over to the programmer here, press the recover button, and you'll see that the LEDs start flashing, the TX and RX LEDs. Yeah, you might not be able to see it on camera, but they're gonna start flashing there, and then over in the programmer, we can see that something's actually happening. Now what's cool here is it doesn't just download the bootloader to the part, but it's also loading the program that you had loaded in. So it's kind of saving you an extra step there. So now I go over to my uh, smartphone here and this is just a simple one button app and we'll scan and we see the new device there pop up. We're gonna go ahead and connect to it and we hit the all on and you can see how it kind of lights up all of the LEDs for us so we can see them all sequence on. And the reason I'm kind of doing that chasing sort of animation is so that in case two pins are shorted together both LEDs would turn on you know at the same time and it would look like we're good but we're actually not so this allows me to test each pin individually and then when I press it again it turns them all off and configures them as inputs so I'll usually do this a few times just to make sure 
and this is really testing the complete board. So we know that we can program the board, we know that uh, we can communicate to the board with the device, and we also know that all of the pins are hooked up to the output pins of the board and we're able to drive them high and low. So that's a nice, good, solid test there. Okay, so that's pretty much it. So this board is good, tested, and then I'll go ahead and put this in the tested pile there and then move on to the next board. So this is just kind of my workflow. And I'm pretty fast at this when I get going with it. So I can do the recover mode pretty quickly there and then go over and uh, I can bang these out really quickly. So that is kind of just a little sneak peek here at how I'm running uh, functional tests on these boards through production. Then after this, of course, I put wrap them back up in the static bags and ship them to the uh, distributor. So this one's ready now and you see that now we have a new device there and this just keeps populating the scan list and we see everything's good. And I really haven't seen too many failures which is good. Obviously you know I wasn't expecting a hundred percent yield with these boards but uh, so far so good. Only one board had one of the GPIO pins not connected. The LED wouldn't turn on so that you know that's good that this test actually can catch uh, manufacturing faults. So, okay. So that's pretty much it. I won't bore you and go through all of these boards here, but uh, that's how you recover a board and just a little sneak peek here, here into the uh, the testing. So, I know I'm kind of rambling at this point, but hopefully that was uh, useful for somebody. Thanks for watching.